What's up, guys? I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Luke Mesger. On the Build Show today, we got a brand new product to reveal for you. Beep! That's right. Something new and cool from Huber Engineered Woods. Let's get going. All right, guys, coming to you from Luke's job site back here in Austin. Luke, we got a big reveal to talk about. What is it? We do. Well, our friends at Huber Engineered Woods have done it again. First, it was Advantech flooring for me. Then it was their foam glue. Then it was I got introduced to their zip system. And now they're just raising that bar once again with their all-in-one rain screen system. Ah, so this black that you're seeing here, this is the facer, but what's behind there is a rain screen product, and that's the actual name, right? Yeah, Zip System Rain Screen is what they're gonna call it. Let's talk about why we need a rain screen. Yep. So on our homes, whenever we're putting reservoir cladding systems, i.e. stucco, i.e. thin veneered stone. So what do you mean by reservoir cladding? For someone watching this yeah. back at IBS, they might not know what that means. So essentially we're putting a sidewalk on your house, right? So this analogy made perfect sense for me once I saw it as like, oh yeah, this isn't a good idea to do. We should build differently. Oh, we so got a visual. I, we like, got, it. I like props. And yes. So imagine you have a stucco home. I'm uh -huh. gonna talk about it like it's a sponge, right? Okay. It's gonna rain. Yep. That sponge gets really wet. That stucco system gets really wet. All right, why in the world <laughs> would we want that right up against our wood structural sheathing? What happens to wood when it gets wet? Yeah, wood and water don't go well Right, together. so our number one enemy against our buildings is water, yeah, right? right? I've heard you say, your friend says, if, it's, if it doesn't dry, it's gonna die, yeah. right? David and Castro, I love that saying. So, when I saw this, I was like, yeah, that's not a good idea. Even if we have our code required two layers a weather resistant barrier, like say we had just normal commodity OSB, yep. and then two layers of tar paper, it's still not a good idea to put that sponge right up against that paper. It's you know? riskier, right? Yeah, it's a uh, high risk. It's a higher risk assembly. It's not that it's going to fail, right? We've all built lots of houses over the years that had less good systems, but it's riskier. Uh, my buddy Brian Euler gave me a great analogy that I'm gonna steal from him, which is, you know, if you're a race car driver, you're you're always going 150 miles an hour. That's a more risky uh, pursuit. You're gonna always wear a four point uh, seat belt. You're gonna put a helmet on. If you're driving down this street where it's 25 miles an hour, it's less risky. So the more risky, the more we need to pay attention. And these reservoir claddings are more risky assemblies, right? Absolutely. So how big of an overhang do you have? Mm -hmm. How many penetrations do you have in your roll? How many windows do you have? Yeah. You know, if I were to put that stucco right in the middle of the field, you're right, I probably wouldn't have a problem with it. But you put it in a whole assembly where yeah. you have all those risk factors, it should start worrying you a little bit. That makes sense. So what we're doing with this rain screen product is we're lowering the risk, right? We're saying, we're gonna put this everywhere, and usually walls don't have problems in the middle of the field. Usually the problems are at the base or around windows or penetrations. We're gonna use this everywhere. We're gonna lower the risk of the house. Now here's what else that we need to know, which is brand new for us in 2023. The codes have changed. If you're building under the IRC or the IBC, and you're in a moist climate or you're in a marine climate, which is like two thirds of America, really. Anywhere east of the Rockies is considered a moist climate. And then we know the Pacific Northwest is the marine climate. Only the really dry states, this is not code. So the Arizonas, the Utahs, uh, you know, Idaho's where it's pretty dry. But as of 2021 now, it's code to have this rain screen assembly behind your reservoir cladding. So with that being said, Luke, talk to me about this new product from Huber. What does this look like and how's it work? Yeah, so we've already discussed the need for a rain screen, mm -hmm. right, best practice. Now the code's gonna require two weather resistive barriers behind your reservoir cladding system. Okay. So if you're already building with zip, we've already got level one done, yeah. right? So uh, the beautiful people at Huber Engineered Woods have come up with kind of a two-in-one product that satisfies your second layer WRB, okay. and then also adds your rain screen to it. So you only have to go around the house one time now, oh, cool. and then start applying your reservoir cladding. And so this is sold in rolls. Uh, these are, this is the, by the way, this is kind of the pre-production version. Uh, so this is hot off the press, but when you guys are watching this at IBS, within a short period of time, this is gonna be available to you at your local lumber yards. It's gonna be fully branded with Zip, 
And there's a couple things we need to know about orientation here too, right? Will you right. talk to me about that, Luke? You're probably gonna see the zip logo on here. Probably something that says this side out because we, we don't wanna have the dimple mat facing out because okay. then um, you're not gonna get the benefit of the, the air gap. The, yeah, and, and your second weather resistive barrier being at your reservoir cladding. Got it. And then another important factor is they have about a three inch lip here that acts as your lap profile just like shingles on a roof, you want to have that, that lap water profile rolls down, down yeah. and out, right? Yep. Um, out. So this side out, this side down. And then you're stapling this on a specific pattern too? Yeah, they're requiring a 24 inches on center. And really that's just to hold it up and maybe give yourself a little bit of wind resistance because yep. once you do your system on top of this, you're gonna chalk this full of your staples to your lath for your stucco. If this was being prepped for stucco, what would you have done differently here? Yeah, so it's a little bit different detail, very similar. The only difference is on your vertical seams, you're gonna to wanna to tape those. Okay, so the product's just butted, and then you're saying you tape those butt joints. Yeah, currently on this house we're doing siding, so we have butt joints. Mm -hmm. But to get your, your weather-resistant barrier rating, you're gonna to have to tape those vertical joints with zip system tape. Oh, okay, so you're using the same products that are already on the Correct. job. Absolutely. That's really easy. And you don't necessarily have to tape these horizontal joints though because this is not your air barrier, this is just lapped uh, shingle fashion for water, right? Correct, absolutely. And uh, do you happen to know what the perm rating on this product is? This I've been told is seven perms. Okay, so I would consider that fairly low perm. Mm -hmm. um, but the zip system that's behind here is really, for, in my mind, is my main air and water barrier. This is that secondary barrier. Absolutely which means that you don't need to tape it to windows, penetrations, things like that. We're gonna detail that at the zip system sheathing layer, not at this rain yeah. screen layer. I always tell my guys in the field, your house is watertight before any of the makeup goes on. Uh, that's a great way and, to say and, it. And this, this is the base layer of my house, so I can take a garden hose to any place in this house and it should hold out water before any siding, any rain screen goes on. So this really is just a secondary layer. I like it. Last thing I want to mention, Luke, uh, this flap right here, when you're at the base of the wall, when you yeah. get down to where your foundation uh, meets your framing and your bottom plates here, what do we do with this flap? Does that flap underneath? Well, you might be tempted to do that because it, you might think, oh, this would be a great bug screen if I could just wrap that around that dimple mat and staple it down. But what you just did was created a place for water to, to get trapped. Uh, you right? shape for it to You just created there. a big dam. So best practice is gonna to be to cut that off and staple it down. If you are concerned about bugs, I'm sure you could add like a Brillo pad material behind that mm -hmm. and squish it all together. That makes sense. But you, wouldn't, you would not wanna wrap that underneath. Yeah, and then ultimately for any rain screen to work to its best ability, we'd like to see that ventilated, that cavity ventilated back there, which means we'd like airflow at the bottom and we need to make some provision for airflow at the top as well. So, you know, where your siding uh, meets your soffit, where your stucco meets your soffit, you gotta figure out a detail, and it's gonna change on various uh, architecture and various ways, but we'd like to be able to see airflow in and airflow out, so if any incidental moisture does get past there, it's got a place to drain and dry out. Absolutely. So, that being said, guys, check this out. This is, by the time you watch this video, this is going to be available at your local lumber yards fairly soon. They're telling me Q2 of 2023. It's a really cool product. And if you didn't realize it, we said it earlier in the video, for a lot of you watching this video, this is a brand new code requirement for you. So this is a great way to meet code and add that extra layer of durability and resilience to your houses at the same time. Any final thoughts, anything I missed? Man, you nailed it. All right, guys, <laughs> go check out uh, Mesger Homes on Instagram. Uh, Luke's been a builder friend of mine for a long time, builds amazing houses here in Austin, Texas. I'll put a link to his website below. But if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Show.